Okay, given y equals to x plus 5 squared, we are told to find the gradient with respect to x. So, to find the derivative of y with respect to x, this is a composite function. There's this outer function that is squared and an inner one, which is x plus 5. To, find, to differentiate the composite function, we would use the chain rule. And the main idea behind the chain rule is that we find the derivative of the outer function multiplied to the derivative of the inner function. So the outer function is x plus 5 squared. Let's find the derivative of this outer function. 2 will come to the front. So the outer function will finally become 2 x plus 5. This is the derivative of the outer function. What about the inner function? The inner function is x plus 5. If we find the derivative with respect to x of this inner function, the final output will become x is a constant. Sorry, this 5 is a constant, so it has the value of 0. Plus, this x has the power of 1. 1 will come to the front. We subtract this power of 1 by 1, so it will be x raised by 0, which is equal to 1. So 1 times 1, this output will become just 1. So the outer function multiplied to the derivative of the inner function, 2 x plus 5 multiplied to 1. The final output will become dx by dy b 2 x plus 5. This is how we apply the chain rule. Now, what about the log loss, the cost function for linear regression? We know that the cost function for linear regression is 1 divided by the total number of elements summation starting from 1 up to the n number of items y actual minus y predicted squared. This y predicted is beta o plus beta 1 xi, a linear model. So to differentiate, we want to differ to find the we want to differentiate the cost function with respect to beta 1 and beta o. To be able to do that, let's express this formula this summation i equals to 1 and y actual minus beta o plus beta 1 x i now in order in order for us to differentiate at a certain point we want to ignore the sum this summation sign and the m the value of m because we are finding the derivative at a single point so our cost function now becomes y. Since we are now differentiating at a single point, we don't use this sub y, sub i, this sub, so beta o plus beta 1 x. This is the formula we want to differentiate. Forget the square here. So the derivative of cost with respect to beta o equals 2 composite function the outer function multiplied to the derivative of the inner function so the derivative of the outer function 2 will come to the front so it will be 2 y let's write it in a closed form y predicted multiply 2 the derivative of the inner function now the inner function is the inner function is y minus beta o plus beta 1 x so to find the derivative with respect to beta o y is a constant item beta 1 x is a constant item too so we will remain with minus beta o so this beta o has the power of 1 1 will come to the front so the whole output will remain as 1 now this minus 1 multiply to the derivative of the outer function 2 y minus y predicted multiply to minus 1 
the final output will be minus 2 y minus y predictive. This is the derivative of cos with respect to beta o. But in order for us to find the derivative of cos for the whole data set, we will add this summation. So it will be 1, 2, summation of this is a minus now. We had the value of 2, so 2 will come to the front here. Now it will be y minus y predicted. This is our final equation for the cost function with respect to beta O. What about beta 1? Also known as the slope. Derivative of cos with respect to beta 1, the slope. From this form, from this formula here, y minus beta o plus beta 1 x squared. Again, 2 will come to the front, so it will be 2y minus yp multiplied to the derivative of the inner function. This is will become a constant now. This is a constant 2. We have minus sign beta 1 x. x is a constant in this situation, so we will ignore it. Now, beta 1 has the power of 1, so we'll, it will lead us to 1. We also have the minus sign here. So the final output will be minus times 2, two minus 2 x y minus y predicted. Now let us let us not bring this x in the front. Let us just leave it in there. So the final derivative of cost with respect to beta 1 at the entire data set will become minus 2 divided by m summation of i equals summation of y actual minus y predicted multiplied to x. Let us add this sub i. Now this is the final beta 1, the derivative of cost with respect to beta 1.